Hi folks, we're continuing with some chapter 6 rotation problems. Here goes. Uh, when blood flows through the left ventricle of the heart through the aor aortic artery, it travels in an arced path that mathematically can be approximated as a semicircle. If the blood is flowing at a speed of 0 0.320 meters per second, and the arc has a radius of 0 0.250 meters, how many g's of acceleration are on the blood in this artery as it flows? So if we're looking for g g's, you are looking for acceleration. And then from acceleration, we can then convert that to g's. So acceleration is our first step, the first thing we want to calculate. Now we know that the velocity is 0 0.320 meters per second. Uh, we know the radius is 0 0.450 meters. And we are looking for, firstly, the centripetal acceleration. So with v and r, we are going to choose the centripetal acceleration equation of v squared over r, which is going to be 0 0.320 meters per second, quantity squared, divided by our radius 0 0.450 meters. And let's pick up our calculator and see what we end up with. So my centripetal acceleration is going to be 0.32 squared, divided by 0.45, I end up with a centripetal acceleration of 0 0.228, if I round that off to three sig figs, um, and that's going to be meters per second squared. Now where do those units come from? I've got on top meters squared, second squared, so I've got meters squared per second squared, divided by meters, divided by meters, invert and multiply, meters squared, second squared, divided by one over meters. This meters cancels one of those meters per second squared, and that's what I end up with. To calculate g's, you take your acceleration divided by the acceleration of gravity, 0 0.228 meters per second squared, divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. And when I do that, I'm going to end up with point 0, 0.0232 g's. Uh, g's is a number that does not have a unit because it is a ratio compared to the acceleration of gravity. And the answer is not a lot of g's is the truth. All right, that will do for this one. Let's go see about another problem. Next one. When the Earth is in orbit around the Sun, it is experiencing a centripetal acceleration. What is causing the centripetal force that keeps the Earth in orbit around the Sun? Well, if here is our beautiful star, and the Earth is in orbit around the Sun, the force towards the center of the circle causing that orbit is going to be the force of gravity. So the force of gravity is what is providing the centripetal or centripetal force. Using data from our planetary data table, calculate the centripetal acceleration of the Earth as it revolves around the Sun. Assume one year is exactly 364 five days long. When it's not, it's 365 and a quarter days long. And that the Earth's orbit is a perfect circle. And as you probably also know, it is an ellipse. So we're going to simplify the math for the Earth's orbit, but we're going to make sure that that works. So first off, um, what do we know? Well, from the planetary data table, um, that's one of the constant sheets I gave you early in the class, a couple things that we can pick off of there. First off, we can pick off that the average radius of the Earth's orbit is going to be 1.50 times 10 to the 11th meters is the average radius of the Earth's orbit. Um, we don't necessarily need more than that. We don't necessarily need the mass of the Earth or anything else, but we do need that radius. Um, we're looking for centripetal acceleration, and so centripetal acceleration, we have two equations, v squared over r, or we have 4 pi squared r over t squared. 4 pi squared 
r over t squared. Well, we have radius, and t is the time to go around once. Well, we have radius, we don't have average velocity, but t is the time to go around once. Well, time to go around once is one full calendar year, and one year, we have said, is 365 days. Let's just convert that to MKS units. So let's get rid of days. In there are 24 hours in one day, and we want to get rid of hours and go into the MKS unit of seconds, 3,600 seconds in an hour. So if I grab my calculator, I'm going to take 365 times 24 times 3,600, and I end up with 31536 with one, two, three zeros, and that is seconds. We do not round this off because these are all exact numbers, and so that is my period of rotation. Now I can calculate centripetal acceleration, which is going to be 4 pi squared r over t squared. So 4 pi squared, my radius from up here, is 1.5 times 10 to the 11th meters. Period squared, which we just found that out in seconds, is 3153612323 seconds. Period is going to be squared. And so here goes 4 times pi squared equals times 1.5 raised to the 11th power divided by parentheses 3153612323 square close parentheses and i ended up with a tiny number um, i'm going to put that in scientific notation i got 5.95 times 10 to the negative 3 meters on the top seconds squared on the bottom. That is the centripetal acceleration. The last bit. Oh, that was the last bit because the first part of the question was force. I think we have time in this video to do one more. Let's see about number six. Many classic science fiction books include spaceships designs that spin in order to achieve artificial gravity. This idea is so logical that it is seriously being considered for future face space station designs. Suppose a space station is designed that is composed of a cylind cylindrical tube and is held together by cross-member beams. Da -da -da -da. Um, if the radius of this structure is 1.1 kilometers, so my radius is 1.10 kilometers, how fast would it have to rotate in meters per second to achieve an acceleration of 1g? So centripetal acceleration would be 1g, which would be 9.80 meters per second squared, and I want to know velocity how fast tangential speed would need to be in order for it to orbit. Well, with that set of variables, that looks like I'm going to use centripetal acceleration as v squared over r. Solve for v. v is going to be centripetal acceleration times r square root, or the square root of 9.8 meters per second squared times the radius, I've got to convert this from kilometers to meters. To go to meters, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, or 1,100 meters. So this is going to be 1,100 meters. And when I multiply that out, 9.8 times 1,100 equals square root. I end up with 104 meters per second is the tangential velocity. B, how fast would this be in revolutions per minute? Well, this gets to be a bit tricky because when I start talking about revolutions per minute, revolutions per minute, um, hmm, well, revolutions is the distance around 
the outside of the circle. So we're talking about actual circumference. So this is going to be, um, we're actually talking about distance around the outside. So velocity in a circle is actually 2 pi r, the circumference, divided by or by the time it takes to go all the way around. So let's see what we've got here. Um, velocity in a circle is 2 pi r over t, and revolutions per minute, well, this is actually a frequency. This is how often something occurs. Revolutions is just a word over time down below. So period, how long it takes to travel, is 1 over frequency, or frequency is 1 over period. So I'm going to take this right here, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for period. Once I have period, I can find frequency. So I'm going to take this equation, solve it for period, period is going to be 2 pi r divided by the velocity. So this is going to be 2 pi, my radius of 1100 meters, the velocity 104 meters per second. So the time for it to go around once is going to be 2 times pi times 1100 divided by 104. Time to go around once is going to be 66.5 seconds, and that means frequency is going to be 1 over pi, and so 1 divided by 66.5, so I'm going to go 1 over that. Frequency then is going to be 0 0.0150 per seconds, or hertz, and I want to convert that to revolutions per minute. So I'm going to go take this back over here, and I've got 0 0.0150 per seconds, and I want to get rid of seconds, go to minutes. There are 60 seconds in a minute times 60, and I'm going to end up with 0 0.903 revolutions is just a word per minute, and that is the frequency at which it is going to revolve in revolutions per minute. This part is a little tricky, and you got to do a little thinking. <laughs> All right, that will do for this one. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.